Lightroom continues to bridge the gap between its photo editing capabilities with Photoshop every single time a new update comes out. But that being said, Photoshop still has a few capabilities that Lightroom doesn't have and I don't think that Lightroom will ever get. Now, one thing that Lightroom could improve on is something that we're gonna talk about today and it's something that I see a lot of people do here in Lightroom Classic or Lightroom Desktop and it is literally ruining so many of your images or maybe it's not ruining your images because you've tried it, it hasn't worked and you just haven't came up with a resolution for it, but I wanna help you with that in today's video. Now in this video, we're gonna be talking about that luminance range masking in Lightroom, um, in Lightroom's masking tools, and why it is such a big problem to use in Lightroom. Let's jump right in there. I will show you kind of what I'm talking about. I've got this image as an example today. Uh, now this image is, you can see very, very high dynamic range. We've got these bright highlights and these dark shadows. Now the problem is like if I want to lower the highlights, you know, it's kind of affecting the whole image where if I just wanted to target this area, I would need to use the masking tools. And then opposite problem with the shadows kind of affecting the whole image. But let's say I just wanted to target the barn, I would need to do that with a masking tool. So a lot of people will open up the masking tool over here. They'll go down to range and they will grab luminance range. Now this makes a selection based off the luminance values in your photos. And you can use it, but only in really, really uh, moderation can you really find good success with it. So let's say I wanna select this spot right here. This is gonna be as bright as you could possibly be. This is the selection it's making. So now I can go here and I can adjust this luminance range selection as much as I possibly want. Um, you know, I can expand these, close these down. Um, but the problem is there's no further um, way to make adjustments to this mask outside of this. This kind of is what it is. So now you'll see the problem is, let's say I wanted to reduce the brightness of those brights. Now it starts to get kind of cloudy up in there. Even if I reduce the highlights, you know, it doesn't look good when I do that. And now I'll show you the same thing if I do that with the shadows. So we want, just want to select this barn, the darkest areas. We'll drag this in and, you know, right in there. Let's say we wanted to brighten this. Now look at how everything just gets kind of nasty looking here. We have before and after. It just kind of flattens everything out and makes it look terrible. Um, and it's because of the selection, because there's not tools to make refinements to the selection. Now, of course, you could just go in with something like a linear gradient. You know, I could go like this just brighten it a touch. Sure, I could do that. But if you want a little bit more precise adjustment, you're gonna wanna do this in Photoshop. And usually anytime I'm making a targeted shadows or highlights adjustment, I'm gonna do that in Photoshop and I'm going to show you why. So I already have this image open in Photoshop. We'll jump right over here. Now you have a few options in Photoshop. The easiest way to do what we're about to do is to go up to select and go down to color range. Then you can select highlights, midtones, or shadows here. The nice thing about this is you can select the range and then you can select the fuzziness, uh, which the fuzziness kind of controls how far out from the range that you are willing to make a selection. Now this works well, but I wanna show you an even better way to do this um, other than this color range and it is free. Now this is totally not sponsored at all, um, but I am gonna recommend this Tony Kuiper panel. Tony Kuiper does have the TK, it's like the eight or the nine panel now, which is a paid panel, but the TK luminosity mask panel is completely free. You can search it up on Google and download it for free. It's like a must have for Photoshop in my opinion. Again, totally unsponsored uh, opinion. It's just something that I recommend. I recommend this for all my workshop clients as well. Uh, and this is nice because it creates luminosity masks. Now I know what you're thinking. If you've never used luminosity masks, you're like, oh my gosh, you know, I came to see what this bad feature in Lightroom was, and now we're talking luminosity masks. What the heck is going on? A lot of people think luminosity masks are complicated. They're actually so, so easy. I'm gonna show you how it works uh, really simply here and why you would wanna use it over those luminance range masks there in Lightroom. So um, you click this button here, and that generates a black and white preview of the image. Now this just creates a mask. Don't be sketched out that you're like, oh my gosh, my image is black and white. All this is is a mask. Anything that's white is going to be on your adjustment layer that we're gonna make. Anything that's black uh, will not be affected by that adjustment layer. 
Now, right now we just have a lights one, but let's say we wanted to select those really bright highlights. So let's go to lights three. Now we can make that selection there. Now I just click lights three and then I click on this button here, which gives me a curve just like that. It's open. Now we can go in and make adjustments. Now you can see, you know, you can still get the same effect if you really pull this down, but you have to pull on it quite substantially. I can go maybe somewhere in there and I can even, if I want to do like create a little bit of an S curve here, or if I wanted to pop the brightest spots, but still darken most of it like that, you know, just to create that little bit of glow that gives you a little bit more versatility. And all that is, is just using a curves layer. Super, super, super easy to do. Now, additionally, the masking, the layer mask here, you do have some more options. So let me just show you the layer mask. I'm gonna hold the option button and click on it. This is our layer mask. It's just the same as we were looking at the mask in Lightroom. Um, now, you can do a few things here. So you, you could like adjust the density to make more of the photo be adjusted by this effect. You can even increase the feather. Now the feather is a lot of times a good thing to do because it can kind of help you to create a little bit of a glow if that's what you're going for. So you can feather that out. Um, and for a lot of adjustments where there's like really fine details, I will make my adjustment really subtle and then I will just increase the feather just a little bit just to kind of make the whole thing look more subtle because ultimately we don't want people to know that we made these adjustments. But just by using this curve, I can pop that area there. Yes, you can still use the curve on masking tools in Lightroom, but you will not be able to do something like this. It's going to make it look pretty muddy. We'll do the same thing for shadows. So we have shadows here on the left. Let's try like a shadows five maybe, or darks five rather. Um, curves again, just drag this up. Now you can see when I drag this up, it doesn't make the foreground look all nasty. I mean, it does give you this kind of like matte look, um, but that's because we've applied it too much. But somewhere like right in there, that looks realistic. We bring up those shadows just a little bit. If you wanted to keep that blacks point down, you could drag from the bottom right inwards and just like that. Make that a little bit brighter, but keep that same contrast. So luminosity mask, super, super powerful tool. You've got your midtones here if you want to do some midtone contrast. I've got other videos covering luminosity masks, so we're not going to spend a lot of time on that right now. Um, but I will link those videos if you wanted to check that out and look at some luminosity masking stuff. It's really the best way to improve your images. Um, if you don't know how to use them, that's probably the best next step for you to improve your images. And you can do it with a variety of different panels. There's a lot of them on the market, but I like this one because it is free, the TK Loom Pat Mask Panel. Um, do check that out. Now, hopefully that'll help you out. Don't use those luminance range sliders in Lightroom. I think they don't provide very good results almost all the time. I exclusively avoid that tool. Um, I use almost all the other masking tools in Lightroom, but I do not use luminance range sliders. If I need to do something where I have high dynamic range and I wanna target a specific tonality, I'll jump over to Photoshop, use those luminosity masks. Or if you don't wanna download the free panel, which there's really no reason why you shouldn't because it's free, but if you don't, you can also use color range to do something very similar, not quite as good, but still very, very similar. Hopefully that helps. If you guys have any questions or comments, check down below. Um, and leave me a comment. I will check it out and get back to you. Um, otherwise, if you don't know how to use luminosity masks, do check out the linked video down below. It's gonna help you learn how to use luminosity masks, which is a great, great thing to do if you don't already know how to use them. Otherwise, leave me a like and a subscribe. Help me to continue to grow my channel and my page. Really appreciate you guys being here. My name is Austin Jackson. Thank you guys so much, and we'll see you next time.